Okay, welcome back. Uh, today, I'd like to go over a uh, concept that we went over in the past, and I want to clarify it. So, in the in the previous notes, I think we did a um, example where we had dt and we had vt and we had acceleration and I think the acceleration may have looked something like this and it may have been uh, this is you know meters per second squared this is in meters per second and this is meters seconds 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 and now here at five seconds the acceleration being a two now If I, for example, was to say, hey, how would I get the VT graph from the AT graph? How do we go from here to here? Well, the process here is that you figure out what the area is. Okay, so let's say we calculated the area, this area here which is obviously going to be, um, let me just move it up a tiny bit more. So positive 10 and the units for that are going to be meters per second squared times seconds or meters per second. Now, you cannot draw the VT graph unless you know the initial position, right? So for example, if I gave the initial position here as zero, so if I gave you, if I this was given vi equals zero, then you can get this graph um, because I may have mentioned in the past that the area here is equal to the value in the graph above going up. What I mean by up is when you have d, v, and a going in this direction is up, going in this direction is down. Okay, So the going up rule was that the area I said was the value. This isn't exactly correct. In this particular problem it's correct but it's not a general rule. So I'd like to clarify this and show you what the general rule is here. So instead of putting in this box we had value, instead we're going to put the correct um, name and we're going to write change in here. So the correct way of interpreting this is change. So, for example, the area here was 10. Therefore, going up to the graph above, I can say, therefore, delta V equals 10 meters per second. Now, if I want the final velocity, I know that delta V is equal to V final minus V initial. So I can rearrange the equation and solve for final velocity. That's just equal to delta V plus VI, because I'll take the VI to the other side of the, e the equation, equal sign, it becomes plus. Now I can say, oh, no problem. What's my delta V? It's 10. So therefore, 10 meters per second plus VI, well, that's zero, you see, now that's going to give me 10. So you'll say, okay, well, 
you know, what's the, what's the difference here? I mean, it seems like we didn't need this VI. We did because even though it was zero, look what happens. So in this case, the final velocity is 10. So let me just draw that. Okay. So now I know that if this is 10 here, okay, there's my point. And so therefore, my graph in this case would be a straight line like that. However, let's back things up a bit. What if my initial velocity here was not 0, but let's say, what if it was 5? OK, or let's not get confused with the five seconds here. Let's make it 15, OK? So let's say <coughs> our initial velocity is at, I'm going to change the scale here a bit to make it um, look different. And I'll say, now it's not 0 anymore. My initial velocity is 15. So now what I would do is I'd have to come over here to this spot and change this 0. So let me uh, erase it. OK. And then I'll make my eraser bigger here. And I'll take away that 0. And I'll take away this thing, because this is now wrong too. And then um, I'll make my pen smaller again. And let's take the eraser off. Now. My VI is 15, and that's going to give me 25 meters per second as my final. So now, at this point here, at 5 seconds, I'm at 25. So my graph starts here, and it goes up to here. You see how things change when I change my initial position. But more importantly, if I, if I didn't recognize that the area is equal to the change, then I would have, if I ignored the initial velocity, I would have still gotten 10, which would be wrong. You have to understand that the area here is equal to the change. And then when you get this, the equation of this straight line, you have to be able to determine, hey, you can add the initial velocity to the change and get your final velocity at five seconds. OK? So that's a very important point that uh, I need to stress in this lesson. So what I'd like you to do now is, let's say, for example, if we take this one step further and say, hey, uh, for the DT graph, what if my initial position is, say, um, oh, I don't know. Let's say it's 12. 12 meters is my initial position. Can you complete the, the rest of this, um, the DT graph? Pause the video now and see if you can figure out what the DT graph looks like if the initial position is at 12 meters. OK. So in order to figure out the shape of this graph, um, let's figure out, first of all, let me change colors, and let's figure out the, the area of this, the, the area underneath the, the VT graph. So essentially, I'll cut it into two pieces. I have, uh, this is five, I have one section. Uh, 15 times 5, that's going to be 75, plus this region here 
uh, and that's a height. This triangle has a height of 10 and a length of 5. So the, the, the triangle there is going to be um, 10 times 5 divided by 2, which is uh, 25. So that's going to be 25. Now if I add those two areas up, 75 plus 25, that's going to give me 100. Now I know that up here, my I can shift colors again, my, my delta D is going to be 100. Now since my DI is equal to 12, I know therefore that my DF is going to be, um, oops, My, my DF is going to be delta D plus DI. Now, that means my DF is going to be 112. So, if I was to, at five seconds here, go up to, say, about here and say, ah, Okay, I'm at 112. Okay, now the question is, what does the curve look like? I know I've got two points on the graph, here and here, but what does the middle look like? Does it look like this? You might be tempted to draw this However, it would be wrong. Because we know it's an acceleration, so we know the slope has to be increasing. So it's almost right, but there is something wrong about it. And I'll tell you what it is. It's this initial part here. So let me, let me actually take that away. The, the part about it that's wrong is at time zero, what's my initial velocity? It's 15. It's not 0. So if I do this, the reason why that would be wrong is because if I looked at the dt graph alone and I was to say, hey, what's the, let's say, let's use, let's say red for this. If I say, what's the slope? Remember going down, slope equals value. So if I take the slope at this point, if I was to draw like a, a tangential line, it would be horizontal. That would mean if it's horizontal, that means my initial velocity should be zero down here, but it's not. So I'm going to take this line away, and I have to recognize that my initial slope is not 0, it's 15. Now, it doesn't matter the actual value. I don't need to plot this like it was a graph. But what I need to recognize is it's not going to be flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this off like that. So, uh, okay, let me try that again. Okay, that's maybe that's a bit too... Maybe that's a bit too uh, linear. If I could try it again, I could go. Maybe like that. That's not too bad. Obviously, um, the other thing which I could do is, well, that's fine, I guess. I, the problem here is with the, the reason why I'm having a difficult time with this is that it's not to scale because if this distance is 12 then surely this distance can't be a hundred so if I really wanted to do this properly I'd have to kind of pull it down and delete these lines and then um, let's say take this out make this much 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 longer and say this is 112 and then say okay here's the point then this would be much more to scale you see
Because at this point, if I've, if I've got a small slope here, which is not zero, now you see how the slope, whoops, I kind of messed up that last part. Well, trying to get close to it. But essentially, the slope here is going to be 25. The slope here is going, the slope here, I can do this in a different color. Here we go. So the slope here is approximately uh, 15. And the slope over here is approximately uh, 25. So much bigger slope. Um, now, that's fine, and this is, this is perfectly good as a freehand uh, approximation of what the DT graph would look like. Okay, as a review, let's kind of go over this. I've kind of uh, drawn some uh, slopes here. I guess I should draw one more line uh, as the vertical line. Let's see if I can do this well. Okay, so these are my ac the red lines are my axes. I know they don't. I know I did this freehand, so it doesn't look like straight lines, but that's not important here. What's important is that we know that this is a positive small slope. This is a negative small slope in comparison to the other ones. This is a negative big slope. This is a positive big slope. And finally, the horizontal line is a zero slope. So essentially, there's only five slopes you really have to know. Positive, big and small, and negative, big and small, and zero. Once you know these, you can, uh, you can draw a graph, let's say for the DT graph um, that we were just doing, you know that at this point it's going to be positive small, not zero. And over here, it's going to be positive big. So, so that's, that's a good approximation. Notice that in the beginning here, my slope was not zero. The other possibilities, right, is a straight line. Now we know it can't be a straight line because we have acceleration. Acceleration is not zero for the DT. And we also know that in terms of drawing a curve, this type of a curve would be wrong as well. That's wrong. Why? Because now the initial slope here is bigger than the final slope. That means that the initial velocity would be bigger than the final velocity, and that's not the case. When we had this graph here for the VT, we, we knew that the final velocity was bigger. So that curve in the kind of the other way curving to the same point is wrong. Okay, so here's another problem. Uh, See if you can, I've given you the acceleration here as negative four for three seconds, negative four meters per second squared for three seconds. And I've given you the initial uh, velocity as 10 meters per second. See if you can figure out what the VT graph looks like in this case. In this case, my acceleration is negative. And then once you've drawn that, see if you can figure out what the DT graph looks like. Okay, and for the DT graph, let me give you a um, initial position at time zero of negative six. Okay. Go ahead and try and draw those two uh, graphs above. Pause the video now.
Okay, so initial velocity is 10. So we have <coughs> the solution here. And um, what we're going to do is let's calculate the area here. of um, this area. So that's 12, negative 12 uh, meters per second. So now I know that the delta here above, oops, the delta going above is going to be, so the change and this is the area, that's going to be negative 12. So if the delta V is equal to negative 12, then that means, um, here, let's go, V final is equal to delta V plus VI. That means that's negative 12 plus 10 is going to give us negative 2. So that means if I change, let's just change colors here for a second. So if that's 10, this is negative 2. At that point, we're going to have a straight line like that. Now, if you're wondering what the next graph is going to look like, we need to calculate the area here. So again, if we calculate this area, that's easy. That's Now, the question is, how do we know what this point is? We don't. So in order to figure that out, let's say uh, v final equals uh, the a t plus v i. Now let's solve algebraically first for t. So t is going to equal v final minus v initial divided by a. And all we need to do now is we know at this point here that our final velocity is equal to 0. So if we put in 0 minus 10 divided by negative 4 for the acceleration, because you know we had that from before right there, um, we now know that our time is going to be uh, 10 over 4, which is going to be uh, 2.5 seconds. That means this location here is 2.5 seconds. So uh, now what do we do? Well we can therefore calculate the area of this triangle now. So it's going to be 10 times 2.5 divided by 2. Oops. Yeah, divided by 2. So that's uh, 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. Now, that's not the total area, because the total area also includes this negative area, which is, so if we do that calculation, we've got uh, width of, or you know, height of um, 3 here, and then a width of 0.5 and divide by 2. And so therefore, uh, that's going to be 0.5. Okay, I, ma I made a mistake here. This wasn't supposed to be 3. This was supposed to be negative 2. So this number is wrong. Uh, that's supposed to be negative 2. And now, yeah, because I knew it was supposed to be 0.5. So uh, now that's not a 3 here. That's a 2 and that's equal to 0.5. This, this is a positive area, this is a negative area, so the total area is 12 
meters. Okay? Now I know if I go up here, if I say, okay, here delta D is equal to positive 12 meters, therefore my D final is equal to delta D plus DI, and my DI is negative 6. So therefore that's 12 plus negative 6, which is going to give me a positive 6. So that means at 2 seconds, there, not 3 seconds, we're going to have positive 6 right there. So let me make that black. There we go. There's our point at positive 6. Now the question is, what does this look like? So we know it's a curve. We know that in our initial velocity is positive. Okay? And we know that the velocity here is um, negative. Okay? The other thing which we should try and figure out is where is the position at time 2.5? You see, that would really help us.